because all three have the Eagles ranked at number one, which is where they should be. They've been the best team in the National Football League, not only by record, but in my account, by the way that they played, they should be the number one ranked team. Yahoo has them at number two. And a good Wednesday morning, an undefeated Wednesday morning. We're going to make everything undefeated until legals aren't. That's the way we look at it. He is John McMullen. I'm Jody McDonald. You got the Mac and Mac guys here on Birds 365. Johnny Mac, we don't usually at this time of the year have roster news to talk about. But when we do, we have to point it out and uh, see where it is taking the Philadelphia Eagles. They signed a backup kicker yesterday. Needed to because of the Jake Elliott injury situation. So Cameron Dicker is now a Philadelphia Eagles, which lends itself to the easiest nickname on the face of the planet. Dicker the kicker uh, is coming to town just in case Jake Elliott isn't ready to go. Uh, Four-year guy out of Texas who also punted his senior year. Wonder if they'll let him uh, keep Aaron Sippa. Yeah, don't uh, sleep on that part of it as well, Jody. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, and any news come out of Happy Tuesdays as far as uh, injuries go and updates? We know that Nick Sirianni liked to play his cards very close to the vest, and his top left tenants don't uh, give it up either. But anybody slip and give you any insight <clears throat> as to how healthy or not the Eagles will be come Sunday? No, in fact, you know, Michael Clay obviously knew who was going to be trying out at kicker uh, yesterday, and it was uh, Cameron Dicker and another kid from uh, East Carolina, um, and and obviously Dicker won. But, uh, you know, he's not allowed to say anything, Jody, because we got to wait a couple hours, and that's the similar thing. You'll see it with Nick today, by the way. He talks about 12-15, and I'll say, well, you know, we'll know. And the first every, every you know. everybody's possible for Sunday. Yeah. Nobody's going to be out. Nobody's going to yeah. be defi- def- definite. Everybody's going to be possible for Sunday. And then by the end of the day, we'll get the first injury reports of the week, which will be an estimation because they're doing a walkthrough today. But uh, and you'll see who didn't practice. And I don't, I I don't understand. They, you know, I the, the, these certain teams and the Eagles are in this category are ridiculous when it comes to injuries. Ridiculous. We're all going to know. Uh, it's just a matter. And and you create this angst. And, I, you know, I've been spent m- – people are going to get mad at me, but I've spent much of the past month talking about what a good coach Nick Sirianni is. This part's stupid. I'll say it. I mean, it, it, it accomplishes nothing, Jody. It accomplishes nothing – except you put your people on alert and they're trying to step on eggshells. You know, the players don't want to admit anything. The coaches don't want to admit anything. It's an unnecessary hurdle. It's rare that I say that about Nick Sirianni because I think he's been a very good coach. This is unnecessary. It is unnecessary. And the reason is unnecessary. You're 100% right. I'm in agreement with you is, do you real here's the question if you had nick face face off the record uh <clears throat> do you really believe the arizona cardinals will prepare any differently because they don't have information that you're giving them on potential injuries with your football team do you really believe that uh they're going behind oh, damn we don't know how to prepare for the yeah Eagles. Because we don't know which Eagles are actually going to play or what level. Come on. Do you really think – do you do that? Do you think Nick does that? Do you think the Eagles do that, that they tailor the minimal practice time they use because of injuries to the team they're facing on the upcoming Sunday? You know, it's it, that is ironic that you bring that part of it up because the Eagles are always, it's about us, it's about us. But I will give Nick credit. He does take advantage of matchups well. So if he sees somebody who is out, he'll try to take advantage of it. And there I'll give him a positives. But, you know, Cliff Kingsbury, and I'm not a big Cliff Kingsbury fan, he's well aware uh, that Jordan Mailata was out. He's well aware that uh, Darius Slay was out. He's well aware that Isaac Sayamalo got hurt. Um, He's got that in his mind. You know, he might not be the best coach in the world, but he already knows. So he knows if Josiah Scott's out there again. Uh, He saw what we all saw. Um, 
Yeah, I, you know, if Avante Maddox shows up, all right, you know, you prepare for Avante Maddox. If you prepare for Avante Maddox, trust me, you're ready for Josiah Scott. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I was going to say, does a change to Josiah Scott really change the game plan of the Arizona Cardinals? Me thinks not. Uh, and to sign Dicker the kicker, they had to release tight end Dalton uh, Keen, which <clears> I guess that would make his nickname Keen the T.E., um, don't we hardly knew ye? Yeah, uh, John say a couple times out there on the practice field, but that's about it. I think that has to do with the fact that their uh, drafted tight end is now physically good to go, no uh, injury questions with him, and he's actually given a chance to make a play every once in a while on Sundays on the roster. So, uh, that do you think they're bemoaning the loss of Dalton Keene? No, I mean, they have 16 practice squad spots and they had to create one and he was the one. So by definition, that tells you he was 16 of 16. Remember, Tyree Jackson's getting closer too from being able to come off the pup list as well. So um, the Eagles are, are, you know, feel comfortable at that position now. Um, and, 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 you know, they already had... Uh, if you think about uh, Noah Tungi, you already had uh, a practice squad tight end as well. So, right. you know, once Tyree Jackson is back and healthy and you, you always play that game, you sort of said, well, we're getting him back so we can we don't need that extra tight end. Um, that's where I think the Eagles were thinking. Plus, he just got here. Usually, you know, uh, uh, you know, the last one in the building first to leave that type of thing. Understood. Um, speaking of close to returning, you said, I think it was either Monday or, or it was late last week, uh, that you've at least seen Andre Dillard out there on the practice field. Um, it was <laughs> take your time, Andre, until Jordan Mailata decided to make a tackle on a pick six this past Sunday. And now it's, oh, wait, is Andre ready to go? He's eligible to come back, was on the IR, had to miss the first four games. The Eagles are 4-0, and so at least as per league rules, he's eligible to return. Where is he actually at as far as returning goes? Well, yeah. I mean, do you think he's going to be honest about that? All I can tell you about Andre is, uh, you know, he had a, a cast uh, on his forearm, um, and now it's off, and um, he's moving around well. Um Four to six weeks, it's, 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 you know, anytime you talk to a lot of doctors over the years, you have to let these things heal. I think that's, you know, a lot of times the cast comes off and these guys look ready to go and they, they, they look like they're old selves, but um, you need to let that heal, you know, which takes time. So it's a, a little difficult. I always thought four to six weeks was really, really optimistic. Um, so I certainly think four weeks is, um, I don't think he's going to be out there. He's going to be activated today and he's going to be out there on, on Sunday in Arizona, but I do think he's getting closer. That's good news. Cause, uh, as good as, uh, Driscoll was, he's one good hit from going down. And if my lot is not up and Driscoll goes down now, all of a sudden you're shifting all the things on the offensive line and that can get a little tricky. Um, so, uh, hopefully, uh, both Dillard and Mylotta are good to go on short. And add Brett uh, Brett Toth in there too as well because he can play left tackle and he's he's ready. All not I shouldn't say ready. He's almost ready to come back from his torn ACL. So um, yes, yeah, he, he's, he's out of sight, out of, sight out of mind. Yeah. When, when well, he's not out of sight. He, he's always out there. He's always out there. Him and him and Tyree are always out there. Okay, uh, rehabbing on a separate field. Um, they both tore their ACL in the final regular season game, the final meaningless regular season game, typically a nine month injury, you know, nine months is mid September. So we're, we're way past it now, a couple weeks past it. So those guys are getting closer as well. Uh, well when, when they actually join the, the uh, practice field with their teammates, then I'll, I'll Hey, what, but what about Todd? How are they going to use him? Uh, not there yet, but uh, we'll see if uh, that advances this week. Oh, that's right. Wait, how much practice time are you guys allowed to, leading up to the game against the final? <clears throat> well, you know, they're going to walk through today. Walk through today. How's that going to go? Well, well, we're not allowed in walkthroughs. That's walk one through of Wednesday. Is that going to be an every week thing with the Eagles? It's got to be, unless there's 
a different scheduled game uh, Thursday night or a they're doing Monday it. Night, uh, right? I I I think they practiced last week. I believe they practiced last week normally, but on no, Wednesday. Uh, I got everything runs together. Um, let's see. They 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 came off the Monday night game. They didn't, but that was understandable because okay. of the short week. Um, and, and and then they beat Washington. I think they did practice last Wednesday, okay. but I'm not. Mm-hmm. Don't quote me on that. But I uh, thought it had become standard operating procedure that it was walk through Wednesday. But uh, you guys got to walk through. But you will hear from Nick Sirianni today, and he'll stay mums to the word of uh, how the I- injured Eagles are looking. All right, Johnny Mac, we got two good guests today. Martin Frank's going to join us coming up in less than ten minutes, and then in hour number two, we're going down the shore with our buddy. Mike Gill from the Sports Bash. Um, but I do want to put this out there before we start breaking down the stuff with our guests on the Birds 4 0 start. And that is the NFL power rankings. Now, uh, we've talked about this here on the show before. Uh, power rankings mean basically nothing other than bragging rights. It has nothing to do with where you sit in the standings. It's not going to get your playoff spot. It's not going to give you a chance, better chance to beat anyone else on the upcoming week or whatever. It basically comes down to bragging rights and how you are being respected by outlets, both here in the Delaware Valley and across the country. And I got to tell you, Johnny Mac, I'm a little perturbed. I'm a little, little put off. Uh, by where the Eagles are being held in accord by certain national outlets. I think it's our buddy Jimmy Kemsky on uh, uh, Philly Voice who does the roundup for us each and every single week. And he's got six different uh, well-respected media outlets that uh, put out their power rankings. Always come out on Tuesday because got to wait till Monday night, see if any of the Monday night teams should effectively move up or move back. Yeah, that would be the Rams. Um the three power, the three outlets that basically, in my opinion, have it right are the NFL Network, NFL.com, uh, the Athletic.com, and CBSSports.com, because all three have the Eagles ranked at number one, which is where they should be. They've been the best team in the National Football League, not only by record, but in my account, by the way that they played, they should be the number one ranked team. Yahoo has them at number two. Buffalo was number one, started at number one. Eagles had to work their way up from where their preseason ranking was to get into the conversation for number one. If you put Buffalo at number one and the Eagles number two, which Yahoo did, all right, I disagree with you, but I'm not going to. All right, all right. You're putting more of an emphasis on where you started the season and movement in the list. The I uh, gave you this number yesterday. The Eagles are number two in the NFL in point differential. Uh, they're plus 44 for the year. Uh, points scored over, points given up. The Buffalo Bills are actually number one, even though they've lost the game. Their wins have been blowouts of other teams, so they're plus a 54. So if you're going to use that, all right, Buffalo one, Eagles two. All right, uh, I'd go Eagles, Buffalo. You want to go Buffalo, Eagles? I'm okay with that. ESPN's got them at number three. On what list should the Eagles be number three, sitting at four and zero at this point of the year, Johnny Mac? Well, they shouldn't, but I, you know, I, I'm always like, well, who who cares? I mean, it's I assume it's one person's opinion. I don't I don't know how ESPN does it if it's one person or if it's you know, uh, if it's if it's polling the whole building. I guess it would upset me a little bit more. Uh, if it's one person, it wouldn't upset me in the in the least. Um, you know, it's somebody's opinion, and <laughs> I mean, I have opinions. I, you know, some people like them, some people right. don't like them. You have a, I, you know, I never get upset. I, I, I say it all the time. I said, you know, Chris Sims. Everybody was he Jalen Hurts is not on Chris Sims list. Yeah, it doesn't look good for Chris Sims right yeah. now. Yeah, but who cared at the time? Who cares? Who cares? He's well, everybody he's cared, but then it plays itself out, and either yeah. Chris Sims looked like, oh shoot, maybe I shouldn't have second guessed yeah, Chris Sims, have, but... or he could be proven woefully wrong, which yeah. is more the case this year with Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I, 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 I never understood why people get so fired up about certain people's and and power rankings. I mean, 
like they're a snapshot. I say the Eagles have been the best team in the NFL, but it's a snapshot. It's week four. Right. You know, hey, half you of this stuff next week, but you, I think you have every right to be annoyed when your team is underestimated in the snapshot look. And I think they have been by Yahoo. I'm okay. ESPN annoys me a little bit. The ringer actually has them at fourth that they've got. <laughs> Who's that? Ben Solak? No, ben. no, no, no. Ben's an Eagles guy. Do you know Austin Gale? No. He That's was on I mean. top of the byline on the and ringer for the power ratings today. Austin Gale, apparently before he went to, uh, uh, the ringer, he worked for uh, PFF, Pro Football um, Focus. Well, yeah, and and well, then he should. Uh, PFF has the Eagles number one in their yeah. overall rankings. Um, so that's the film. Um, I, I I I I try to muster up. You know, it, these things it, it are doesn't are, bother you. No. Apparently, it doesn't bother you as much as it bothers me. It, here's it, here's the promise. Um. I'm going to ask you to work your PFF guy and get us a contact for Austin Gale. If the Eagles win this week, beat the Cardinals, and he's still got them at number four next week, we got to probably get doesn't like Jalen Hurts as a quarterback. Well, and then he we got to get him on Jalen the show Hurts. and let him explain to us how he's watching Jalen Hurts do what he's doing and not give him his proper respect. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll effort. I do not have Austin Gale's uh, contact. I don't have his number. I don't have his email. I don't have his Insta. Uh, but if if he, I will say, I'll use the word, this is. And I think he's this, the Philadelphia Eagle this week by ranking him number four in his power rankings. Oh, we'll get him on next week. We'll, we'll, we'll. Somehow, somehow we'll track him down and try. Or we'll at least give him an offer to join us here on birds. Unfortunately, Austin Gale's power rankings are worth the same as the three power rankings that had the Eagles number one, unfortunately, <laughs> but you know, if it makes you happy, it makes you happy. Yeah, but it we, makes you sad. Johnny, it makes you... Johnny we uh, appreciate those who stream on in for us every single day. And the only thing we're given is our opinion. Uh, it's yeah, the same exact... Exactly. Our opinion exactly. is the same as now Austin Martin Gale's Frank's opinion. Oh where my! He has the Eagles. Oh my! Uh, they, that they, is it. And by the way, Paul Domowich, number two, should have threw uh, threw Paul under the bus as well. For the he's got Bills number one. I believe he's got the Bills number one. See, yeah. I'm okay with that. I don't agree with it, but I'm okay with it. That's at least debatable. The fact that this guy from the Ringer has three teams above the Eagles at this stage. I'm sorry. You got to explain that to me. I uh, don't quite. Is one of them the Giants? <laughs> no, <laughs> that that crazy is not. Uh, Bills, Chiefs, Packers. Because oh, I, the pack. That's too much respect. Nobody has more respect for the Packers than me. Because I, you know this, Jody. I love Aaron Rodgers, and even that that they belong nowhere near number three. But that's just respect for Aaron Rodgers. It that's is. That's all that is. And I know this is. Shoot, I've been doing this for a long time, so I know that this is not. And when you say something like this, people take it to heart, and it's just it's it, it's opinion. It's a comp like anything else. Both the Eagles and the Vikings, uh, Eagles and the Packers, have played the Vikings. How'd that go for Green Bay? How'd that go for Philadelphia? Yeah, they, well, they stink too. So I'll go. Uh, we got to get to Barton, but Pro Football Focus looking at the film. So, you know, their top ten teams. Uh, Bill, uh, Eagles are one, Chiefs are two, 49ers are three. I have no problems with that, right? According yeah. to them, the Atlanta Falcons are tied with the 49ers at number three. The Saints are five, they stink. The Vikings are six, they stink. Uh, the, the Bucks Saints? are seven. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. Did you, the Saints are what? Five. They're God, ahead, they're ahead of the Vikings. In the league right now? Yeah, they're ahead of the Vikings who just beat them. On, on a double doink, and, and both of those teams stink. Tampa Bay, seven. Uh, Buffalo is eight. They and got the Saints. Oh, wait, just stop right there. They have the Saints at five and the Bills at eight. Yes. See, this is why I refuse to play pay for pro football folks. And number nine, get this one, Jody. Number nine, top 10 team in this league, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yikes. Uh, that's uh, at certain things that Pro Football Focus puts out, I, I really like and agree with. Uh, and other times they just leave me scratching. Now, their rankings head. are a little bit different. They're saying, they're not saying these are the best teams. They're saying this is 
these are the teams that have put the best film. So, you know, the quarterback might stink like Pittsburgh, but other people might be doing their job. So it's a little bit different. Yeah, but, no, uh, no one has gotten close to the Pittsburgh punter this year. So that play is the same as a fourth and one from the two yard yeah, line in the fourth Which is quarter. exactly so. All plays are created equal, which is ridiculous. Pro football focus, ridiculous. That being said, I do have some pro football focus grades. I want to write that <laughs> later because he he pays for the service, and I've just refused. They're not going to. No, I don't penny. pay for the service. You Come get on, a comp. Yeah. You're a uh, comp I, guy. I, I no, I don't. I, I get it through other avenues. Oh, okay. Uh, well, you, you, I'm going to ask corporate you to go, corporate avenues. I'm going to ask you to say. go down that avenue for me a little bit later. The avenue we're headed to next is Delaware. We're going to bring our guy up, Martin Frank. He's going to join us here on Birds 365. <laughs> 